Yeah, yeah, there's so many ways to like learn, I mean. So like it's always fresh. Like one day you'll learn by doing a group activity, another day you'll learn by, you know, going outside and experiencing things like in the real world, I guess, not just like at your desk. And um, it keeps it fresh, it keeps you like excited to go to school, excited to learn. If people are working in a friendly and supportive manner with someone, what would I see them doing physically? How would they be sitting? What would their facial expression look like? And then what would they be saying to each other? How about eight to um eight to, to maybe sixteen? Yeah, I was thinking that. They'll be able to relate to each other. And um, in middle school, of course, that's what we want the students to be able to do, to have a relationship with each other and know how to socially get along with each other. And I think this process really helps them understand um, how people get along and how people are different than themselves, and that's okay. Here, you, you can really collaborate to put things together. Like, Connie is a really good drawer, Great. and I'm better at like doing things more technology. And I remember in sixth grade, me and Ivana did a project together. Oh, yeah. And Ivana was doing all the drawing, but I was doing all the typing. And like, it's just, you can put things together, and you can do things, and you can combine your strengths that end up being something that's even better than what you can do on your own. What you think that that is cool about the fine or in jail? What you think? I think it's not cool. I really feel I feel I have to be feel patriotic about what I'm doing, and I, I feel that way. I feel like I'm sort of the working with the personification of the American dream. With the ELL students, it's important that they learn how to ask questions and in English, of course, but it's important that they be able to ask questions in their native language also. Um, it's great that the students in my room, I speak their languages, and when you look around the room, you'll see posters that are in English, Spanish, and German. I want to value the cultures from which they come, but also I want to empower them with the questions that will help them move forward in this country also. We can do a lot of other things with our inquiry projects like drawing and besides just reading out a textbook and taking notes and then writing up a report about it you can like we have the things called investigation pages so we draw like pictures and borders and it's like make like non-fiction conventions and things like that yeah page. and you can yeah. like you can like choose what you do too which is cool yeah. it's not like okay everybody do an investigation page about the same topic yeah I think that what they do on tests is very reflective of the type of deep thinking that they're doing in the classroom through active literacy and through engagement our students score very highly on state tests you know in the high 90s typically across the board inquiry is especially important for kindergarten students because they're at that developmental process where they're learning how to ask questions. A number of students, even a, a number of our higher students I have found, do not know how to ask questions. Can you ask a question about a snake as he comes over to talk to you? What? When does a snake eat? Once they start asking these questions, just that light bulb clicks. And with all of the students, no matter what developmental level they're at, and they start digging deeply and becoming curious about everything. How do butterflies drink nectar? Well, most of the activities, they're working in groups, whether it be paired groups, three, four, five. And I'm fine. At first, I was one of those teachers that was very afraid of students discussing and talking in groups because I felt that a noisy class was a classroom where there was no learning going on. I beg to differ now. This text reminds me of my grandma because she's half Mexican. And everything I'm learning about Mexican, she does the same things. Uh, even last year at a classroom, they started out, I think it was like 42% at or above grade level reading. And they ended the school year at 76% at or above grade level. And I attribute to that to students working and talking things out, which was a big fear of mine at first. We are all kind of piggybacking me. Like, just a second ago before you came. All right. Um, I, Graham was like, saying like, he, like, he imagined Miss I came across best practice. And all of a sudden I was seeing practices that were like mine, things that I was like, okay, I'm not crazy. There are teachers in this city that seem very far away from me right now, but that are trying it out, are tr blazing the trails, are out there doing it. And then it kind of gave me hope. It kind of gave me like, you can do this, you're on the right track. Like, how does it feel in a book club discussion when everybody's sharing and everybody gets to share their ideas? I think it feels better because- I had a student the other day. He was a student that was always in trouble. 
and uh, he was out for medical exclusion. At the end of the day, I saw him downstairs, and I said, well, why are you here uh, today? He said, I just had to step in the building because I am addicted to school, and addicted to school. But that's what good readers do. I mean, we're able to respond to questions like that that make you think, so super job. That's, that's what's cool about the teachers here. They're all kind of quirky, but they yeah. still, like Mr. Gallagher, he yeah. kind of teaches us with his storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Every no, day, no, every no, day no. he'll have a new story to tell, but then it always somehow connects to our math lesson. Yeah. One is one of them, and it's what I is zero one of them then? I'm just wondering, because you're giving me that weird Gallagher face, no, like, I'm what are you not. talking about? I'm not. I'm not. Well, because zero cube, wouldn't that just be zero? Yeah. Yeah. I've made our teacher go insane. I know. Well, that's okay. I can handle that. It's just an awesome way to get people involved and mm -hmm. to keep people focused and things like that. We were talking about how they can represent their learning. Well, now they can make their own movies. Now they can create songs and, and podcasts and radio shows. Now they can write reviews that people around the world can see. It's very exciting. We live in a global environment. If we want to compete globally, we've got to tune our kids in on the global sphere. With everything else we've talked about, it's the main thing that the uh, artist wants you to notice. Like, I suppose our hope and our wish for them is that they're able to think. They can think and engage with each other, they can think and engage with text, they can think and engage with people that have other perspectives. Well, I sort of agree with you and I sort of don't because I sort of think I went too fast. Okay. So you guys were a little uh, behind. Okay. You are the only eighth grade teacher that that student is going to ever have. And you can be the person that makes the difference in that child's life giving them opportunities, really caring about them, you know, getting on them when they're not doing right, but loving them anyway and making sure that you're giving them all that you can give them. And that's just my passion, that's my desire, and that's why I decided to teach. You got it, give me a high five. High five. What did you learn, Kim? I think some schools kind of lose their steam, they have their heyday, and then it kind of goes, okay, now that you know this principal's gone or this teacher's gone, it's not like that here. Everybody's, this, this is something that permeates, and so, when I'm gone, it'll keep going because there's other people who are going to carry it on and, and believe it and feel it. So I think that makes a difference.